So, I ain't got no reason to kill the kid. If I ain't got no motive, you ain't got no case. His motive? He has to have one, but what is it? Maybe he decided he wanted that ticket. But then if he wanted the ticket, wouldn't he have taken it? Oh. Uh, okay, first things first. I know I'm doing this a lot, but... <laughs> Man, that is so good. Okay, so we're back. And, uh... So anyway, he tells me he's got nowhere to pay. You're about to flatten the guy. Were you, like, seriously gonna kill him right there in the bar? <clears throat> or in the restaurant, I mean? Yeah, he did get real lucky. If that waitress hadn't done what she done... Let me see what this... Okay. The waitress, you mean... The girl with the glasses in the defendant's chair. Who else would I mean? If she hadn't gotten the way, things would have been bada bing bada boom over and done with. Mm -hmm. Ask about what Maggie did. Ask how things would have been. Uh, I'm not sure. Okay. What Maggie did. How things would have been. I don't know if I want to bring Maggie into this. I don't think it matters, though. It seems weird. It's like a, it's like two versions of the same question. What do you mean things would have been over and done with? Is it possible he doesn't know Maggie's name because it hasn't been mentioned yet? And is that going to be important later? Because that's the only reason I can think of why I wouldn't want to... Why I wouldn't specifically say about, like, ask what Maggie did. You know, I don't know. I'm pretty sure her name has been brought up at some point, though. Are you all there or what? I'm talking about the cash. I was there to get my hundred thousand bucks back. That's all. What happened to my voice, man? It was all coming together before that waitress got in the way. Hmm. Okay. So the tiger's motive. He's wanting his freaking money back. Did have any other reason to kill the guy? Are you sure? That's the last statement, isn't it? Yes, I want. Oh, he changed it. Okay. Let me actually press this. Are you saying you had no other motives that day besides getting your money back? Yeah, exactly, really. <laughs> Why do you think? Because of four eyes over there. Because of Maggie? They're not saying her name. And he keeps calling her. How about you go ask four eyes about that half a million dollar lip ticket? She wanted it so bad, she poisoned Elvis' coffee. A likely theory. A likely story, but... Leave a message and I'll call you back. Objection. Let's not forget this witness was actually at the scene, Trite. The law don't exactly agree with some of the deals I send down. I couldn't be there when the cops showed up, so I split. You see... Your Honor? What? The witness's last few statements are worth a good two cups of coffee. So what, about sixteen dollars? Uh, I don't know. Have it amended. Uh, do I need to change it? This feels like another trap. I'm gonna leave it at that and try to figure something out. Thank you, Your Honor, but there is no need to amend the testimony. Very well. Continue with your cross-dressing. So the tiger was meeting Glen Ellis to get his money back, and Mr. Elves just given him the lottery ticket. That would have been the end of it. But instead, the waitress came along and messed everything up. At least according to him. Okay, we heard that already. 
here's the thing. They were sitting at the table and the CD was there. All this time I've been thinking that the CD was a part of it, like that maybe he was gonna, he made the CD to pay back the tiger, so the problem is wait. No other reason to kill the guy. But the thing is that they were saying that that program is worth like multi multiple millions of dollars. So that would be a reason to kill him, steal its program, and make off with the remainder. Let's just go with that. Where is it? Here we go. So you just intended to get back the $100,000. Mm-hmm. Okay. Maybe it is, but unfortunately for Mr. Elge, I don't believe the $100,000 is what you were after. <laughs> what are you getting at, Trite? What else would a money lender be after other than money? Things worth money? Silver? Gold? Trust funds? Mutual loans? Whatever. Hmm. What is that? What is what? He asked you a question. What is that? Ooh. What does one of those do? Well, you see, I gave it a cold. Hmm. A computer. What does one of those do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing, Your Honor. I'm just kidding. Mm hmm. Yes! Lending money with no hope of ever seeing repayment would normally be bad for business. But in this case, the very fact that Glen Elch had no way to repay the money is crucial. Was it? Yeah, he was. That skill was the collateral Mr. Elch put up in order to borrow the money. But... You're trying to suggest the witness's motive was to get hold of that program? Exactly. <laughs> Poor fashion sense, I'm... Uh, uh. Yeah, that's true. Provided that he had time. Oh... He needed the money for her medical bills, didn't he? When the pressure is on, the luxury of choice tends to disappear. It seems you have a logical conclusion for this theory. Yes, I do! Why did Mr. Tiger need money to the tune of one million dollars? <laughs> Jeez, could you make that any easier? A one million dollar bill for cranial surgery. Payment was due last year. In December of last year, you found yourself in need of a huge amount of money. Ooh, boy. An accident involving a car and a scooter. <laughs> oh, well, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> I was there. You don't know that. According to these, her operation cost one million dollars. Payment for these expenses was due in December of last year and was paid in full. <laughs> Those HMOs, you know it. No one would pay a bill like that. If the medical association got wind of it, the hospital would end up as dead as a morgue. But Mr. Tiger had no choice but to pay. Because his very life depended on it. Wee. It's more like her life depended on it, but... Well, his life did too, because of her grandfather, yeah, yeah. Yup. Did you say Cadaverini? Why, are you connected to them too? Doting grandfather to his precious Violetta, Violetta, also known as Viola Cadaverini. 
your life was in danger unless you paid compensation to the boss, correct? It makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> Just stop doing that, getting up close to the mic like that. You know, when, it, when my sister and I used to make the Water Hands movies, we never broke the fourth wall with it. But this one time, I made Aqua look right at the camera and say, Makes sense! And ever since then, we both laugh when I say that. <laughs> but then a miracle happened. Yeah, this whole lottery ticket thing really messed it up for Tiger. Mm-hmm. Because the original... Because, you know, it's like... I mean, Tiger wanted the CD. And that was the plan originally, but once the lottery thing happened, Glenn Elch could have just given him the ticket and taken the CD back. But Tiger didn't want the 500000 He wanted that CD. Because he knew it was worth a lot more, so... <laughs> worked out good for him. Frame Maggie Bird. That is still so weird that he could have posed as Glenn Elch. But then again, he posed as me, so... I guess it's not that weird. And Viola must have taken her bandages off to do that. Huh. And then this guy over here was just chomping away two frames at a time on his seeds. Bird seeds, that is. No, no, he could have. He anybody could have. Well, not anybody, but <laughs> That's right. Shoot. Whoosh. I don't know why I keep saying whoosh. It's not like there's a breeze in here or anything. <clears throat> you just put on a good show, Spikey! But there's still the whole thing about the fake trial and how he pretended to be me. If you just want to stay alive in the Lone Shark business, you got to be careful. You saying I dressed up like that kid, created a witness, and framed someone? If I did something crazy like that, I'd leave a trail as bright as my shirt shirt. I ain't dumb enough to do something sloppy like that. One more trick to make sure Miss Bird had no way out. Oh no, I hope Gumstreet gets back with those prints. Interesting, why don't you fill us all in, Trite? What was this trick you say, Mr. Tiger, you performed to frame the accused? He put the stuff in her, uh... His apron? What was it again? The bottle. Oh, he probably put her fingerprints on it, too, like while she was passed out. I mean, I'm assuming here... Because that was pretty much the best evidence they had against her. Was that the bottle was found on her, and what else? There was like a second thing. Does it doesn't even matter. So I, mean, I think the bottle is it. It's a prescription bag, no. <laughs> he also imitated me. Maybe that's the trick? I don't know. Surely I have to present this at some point to somebody. <sighs> Sorry, I had to blow my nose. <coughs> what were we saying, paper badge? I mean, I would think if you're talking about a trick, I wouldn't consider planting evidence on someone a trick. As much as... pretending to be a lawyer. But even that still is, like, completely ridiculous. What an insult to think anyone could be fooled by such a childish imitation. <laughs> Mr. Tiger, you didn't just pose as the victim on the day in question. 
a month ago in this very court, you posed as me! ME! <laughs> the truth. The truth now. But the witness looks nothing like you, Mr. Wright. No, he doesn't. Although, now that I think about it, it was you, wasn't it? <laughs> no doubt it was you standing in here in this very court a mere month ago. The Phoenix Wright who put up the most dis disreputable. <laughs> Oh, man. Can you prove that, Gramps? Prove the attorney who represented the, accu the, the accused here a month ago was this man? Are you prepared to take the stand and testify that it was him? Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Forget about it, yeah? Why? What? I wouldn't do something like that, not me. You you made a mistake, right? It was someone else, huh? Okay. <sighs> Bargaining. The third stage of... whatever. Oh, what cup is this? Number 23,200 and... something. In case you didn't know, try right here in court, we deal with people's lives. Nerd. Mr. Gatto is right. Your Honor, speaking for myself, I am absolutely convinced. The attorney in question was the witness standing before me now. However, I preside over this court as the judge. I don't have to stoop down to your level to tell the truth. I don't have to be some lowly witness. Someone in my position cannot be swayed by a memory without evidence to support it. Oh... Okay. No, but, but dude, after all that? Well, but... Oh. Every single thing just... Dear God. Sucks to be you, right? Don't mess with the tiger, or you're gonna get mauled. He's got that. All we managed to do here was chase him around a bit. <laughs> no. This can't be it. Looks like I won't be needing a refill. Oh, now here comes Gumshoe with the fingerprints. No, he's not! He can't be! No, no! Oh! Oh, thank God. Your Honor, sir. <laughs> oh my God, look at that picture of him! Gumshoe, you're so freaking awesome. This is why you're my favorite character, man. Mm, the works. So here it is. Gumshoe should get a raise, no doubt about it. Oh. What is it, detective? Isn't it obvious, pal? It's the final decisive piece of evidence. What? Show it to him. Oh, I guess we don't need to. <laughs> well, I guess there was no need to go through all that anyway. Sorry it took so long, pal, but I finally got the results from the lab. The results? About the prints, pal, from this medicine bottle. You think I'm some kind of hack detective? Of course I know. So tell us, they're the tigers, right? I knew it. You bet. Clears Crystal Pepsi all over the bottle. They're Furio Tiger's paw prints, all right. <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel like 
Okay, even if it is his prints on the bottle, does that... Well, because the ear medication was in the bottle. Still, does that... I don't know if that really proves that he poisoned the coffee, though. So the thing is, the body was in the kitchen, right? Now, yeah, let's just see where this goes. Look, I'm sorry, this is kind of hard to say, but... It really doesn't make any difference whose prints are on that bottle now. Why not? What we need to produce at this stage in the trial is irrefutable evidence that the tiger put poison in Glen Alger's coffee. He's already admitted that he met the victim. The fact that his prints are on this bottle, that really doesn't make any difference now. Of course. I knew it. Great, no matter how hard I try, I'm never of any use. Oh, and after all that wonderful... It's just like in Final Fantasy IV when Iridia triumphantly saves you from Golbez. And then he goes and turns into a hand and steals the crystal while everybody just stands around like dumbasses. Instead of, like, stepping on him or something. Just ruins the whole thing, you know. Oh, no. Well, have you? It's alright. I'm a real loser. It's not breaking news to me, pal. What? Detective Gumshoe? Maggie! You've been working on something for me? Everything he's done has been for you. Sorry I let you down, Maggie. I know you didn't do it. And I'm a detective. We're supposed to be able to prove stuff like that. I'm really sorry. I'll get out of your hair now. No! Come back! Come back! Yeah, he did. Well, we'll probably get to use it in the future. They wouldn't put so much emphasis on it if not for the fact that it was going to be useful. I knew this wasn't over yet. Who else is... Well, I guess there's Viola. Maybe she can testify. Or we could just do this guy some more. <laughs> Mr. Wright. You know what? I'm saying it here. I actually want to go ahead and stop for a little bit since they're home and everything and I think they want me for something because they opened the door a second ago. You might have heard that. So yeah. So next time on Ace Attorney, the Inquisition of the Tiger continues. <laughs>